Welcome back guys. All right, so here we go. Last video we said we we're gonna talk about um, continue on with the conversation that happens between the compile phase and the um, runtime. And we're gonna get into a little more difficult exercises, which is right here. And we're also gonna talk about ify, so conversation with ify, because this is one concept that I actually did have a hard time understanding, but I thought I'll explain in different scenarios. So it will be much more easier to understand and absorb. Uh, and from exercise two, not only are we gonna talk about what happens at the compile phase versus the runtime, including RHS and LHS at the runtime, we're gonna also talk about the concept of lexical scope. And this is very important. And as we dive in and do all of this, we're gonna uh, we're gonna understand how what lexical scope is and uh, yeah and again all of these materials are what I've I've been blogging while learning um, reading Kyle Simpson's uh, you don't know JavaScript and it's a great book it's a very famous book I hope that you check it out because it really saved me a lot of time here we go so what happens in the beginning of all things when you press enter run your code. Right. What happens is JavaScript goes in and uh, starts its compiler, compile phase. And the compiler goes in and it tries to read all the codes and then turn it into binary code in which computer can understand and execute in. So it goes in, the first thing that compiler happens, the main thing that happens at the compiling phase, right? I'm gonna write this, compiling phase. The main thing that happens is compiler communicates with scope that it is in. All right, oh my goodness. Here we go, sorry about that. All right, so this is what happens in the compiler phase, all right. So it looks at, uh, at the compiler phase. What happens in the compiler phase mainly the compiling compiler's job at the compiling phase, right? It talks to the communication with the scope to do what? Its only job is variable decorations and function decorations. And how do we know if it's a variable decoration? Anything that has VR at the front. Well, how do you know if it's a function decoration? If the statement starts out with the function keyword, like that. So it looks at variable foo, right? It goes. All right, here we go. Variable foo. We have a, hey, global scope. We have a variable decoration called foo. We're going to have to store it into your scope engine. Scope engine goes, all right, bring it in because it's a black hole. It sucks in all the variable decorations. So variable foo is created, sends it in. All right, and then we put it into the variable decoration. And then that is done. And then we go to the next line we have this whole thing called function bar. And this is a function decoration because it starts the statement with the function keyword. So it, it talks to the global scope that it is in, it is the scope that it is in, which happens to be global scope and goes, hey, we have a function decoration called bar. We're gonna have to store it into the global scope. Global scope goes, hey, bring it in. And so function decoration is created but what happens versus the difference between the function decoration and variable decoration is that you notice that assignment didn't take place however with function decoration the moment function decoration happens right what I mean by that is variable bar is created with function decoration and inside is a function object that happens and I kept repeating this last videos too, but it's very important to understand this is the same as this. Except it's just different way of writing it because you want different things to happen at the compile phase. And if you write it like this at the compile phase, variable decoration will happen first, and then the actual assignment of function object, so the fun will happen at the runtime, which means the function will be created at the runtime. But if you write it like this, not only 
variable decorations happen, but function object is created immediately. So that is why we call this function decoration. So function decoration happens, and um, when function decorations are created with identify variable decoration with BAR, and function gets stored inside, we recursively go in and actually create the scope of function that you just need to understand. You just go through the whole thing. Just understand that um, variable decoration, you just create the variable decoration only. But with function decoration, you just think of it as declaring a function decoration means actually going in recursively into the function and declare all the variable and function decorations inside of it. So you recursively go in. And in JavaScript, scope is the only unit of, I mean, in JavaScript, function is the only unit of scope. So we just created a mini scope, just like the global scope that is containing all of this outside. And so this private scope is here. And function is the scope that contains all these lines. I think of scope as a black hole, or I think of scope as a Pokemon ball. You know, inside of a Pokemon ball, it's a private scope, and you could contain all the codes in there. Uh, okay, maybe someone will not like that, but that's just another way of looking at it. And so this is whole thing right here is a scope, it's a private scope, and you recursively go in, and what do we do with the scope? We do all the variable decorations. And so variable foo is created, gets hoisted into, raises up to the, and gets stored into the scope of bar. Function decorations happen right here because it's a statement, starts out with the function keyword, gets declared, gets stored into the uh, scope it is currently in, bar, and we recursively go in because it's a function decorations and do all the variable and function decorations inside, which it doesn't have any except this parameter called foo. Parameter in a function decoration is implicit variable decoration. So it's same thing as having VAR at the front, it's just implicit, not explicitly written like VAR. This is just something you just need to memorize. And this is going to be uh, so variable decoration actually happens, gets stored into which scope? Outside of function scope or the global scope? No. What happens is that foo variable decorations happen and gets stored into the BAS, scope of BAS, because it's inside of this mini BAS. And right here, and ignores these two lines because you know it's LHS and RHS, which I discussed last video and that doesn't happen at the compile phase we are only caring about decorations at this point because it's the compile phase that's the job of the compiler goes outside and reads the sign this is not of any decoration so it skips it goes outside looks at all of this oh bam it's none of these are variable decorations or function decorations so it skips it so now after all this has happened compile now we're done with the compiling phase. The compiler's job is done. Now the runtime begins. What happens at runtime? JavaScript talks to the scope engine that it is currently in, or is scanning, and uses these two terms called LHS versus RHS. This is, this is a way of communicating with JavaScript and the scope engine in order to get all the decorations we just stored away to get back. This is just a way of communication. In compiling phase, we used communications called variable decorations, function decorations, we're gonna store it to your scope. In compile, in the run phase, runtime phase, we use LHS, RHS to get all of these decorations back to use. Now, LHS, I have mentioned before, uh, just a quick summary is, I, is when you're looking for a decoration in intent to assign a value to it. RHS is when you're not looking, other is something that is not LHS. If it's not, if you're not looking for a decoration to assign, then it has to be RHS. Or its intention is to actually use the variable decoration. Uh, whatever is inside a variable decoration, then you're looking for RHS. Now, let's get into it. So, in execution time, it goes back in and runs it again. But the thing is, VAR no longer exists because VAR foo, variable decorations actually haven't got stored away. So what's left is foo equals bar. That's what's left at the, at the runtime. 
So we have to, we talked to what scope are we in? We're in global scope. So JavaScript goes, hey, we have LHS, left hand side identifier called foo. And it's LHS because we're going to tr try to assign a immediate value called BAR inside. And it's immediate value because we don't have to manipulate to get the value. It's already string value. Bam, it's out there. It's immediate. And so the global scope goes, hey, we do have a variable declaration. We just stored away at the compile phase. And we're going to give it back to you. And we get the variable foo back. And we actually assign the value in. So that's just, on, that's just one way right there is a communication that happens using LHS to get the variable declaration back. And we use that variable declaration to store the value in. Now, we look at the next line. This does not exist at runtime. You know why? Because function declarations gets created and got stored away to the scope engine. It doesn't exist. This simply does not exist at the runtime. What's left are things that has not been stored away, which is called bar, foo, bam, baz. So we go to the bar. Hey, so what is this? This is not LHS, right? Because there's no equal sign. There's no, we're not trying to assign a value. So we goes, hey, scope that we're in, which is global scope. We have a RHS identifier called bar. We need it back so that we could use it. That's what RHS is. When you're looking for something in intent to use, we're looking for an identifier to use. And it goes, Okay, we actually have the scope global scope goals. We actually have a function declaration called bar, and it gives back this whole function object back to us. And then we're gonna use this to execute it. Now we executed it, right? We go into the function bar, and we're gonna execute all the lines inside. What's left? At the member at the compile phase, we recursively when when the function was originally created, it recursively goes back in, <coughs> does all does all decorations. So what's left by the time at the runtime when we go in, you have to look at the video that I made before to understand all of these. Everything I made, uh, everything I talk about is discussed in in a line, in a very like you can't. It's not one of these videos where you could just kind of like go into the middle of the video and understand something from that concept. You have to look at it from the beginning. And that's how I learned it. And I think that's how it should be taught. And so you go in and what's left at the runtime, because everything was declared, is foo equals bass. That's the only thing that is left. So right here. By the time we go in, this is what's left. Foo equals bass. And function decorations actually already got they declared and got stored into the scope of bar. So what's left by the time we ask for RHS bar and we get it back and we execute it, and so we go in, what's left are these two lines. Because variable foo got declared and got stored away into the scope of bar, function decorations got actually got created and got stored away into the bar, scope of bar. So what's left are these two lines, which is LHS and RHS. So we're gonna do, hey, current scope, what do you think it is? Global scope? No, because JavaScript is, in JavaScript, the only unit of scope is function. So right here, this is a scope itself. So it goes, hey, scope of bar, do you have LHS identifier called foo? We're going to assign a value equals, hey, variable foo is right here. Gives it back, we assign a value. Now, we skip this because it doesn't exist anymore at the runtime. And it goes, hey, we have RHS intended to use identifier called BAS. Do you have it? Bar. Is it what you say here? Is, did all the variable decorations happen? Yes. Right there. Right there. Function BAS was actually declared and got stored away. So it gives back this whole function back to us instead of this identifier called bas. It contains this function now. And then we execute it. And 
what happens if we recursively go in and execute all these lines, right? Now, I mentioned that foo, this is an implicit variable declaration, so this already happened at the compile phase. And so what's left is these two lines, which is LHS both for both. So if we look for the LHS identifier called foo, and we get it back with variable declaration, assign a value to it, bam. And next time, we talk to the scope of engine that it is in, which is in BAS, and goes, hey, we have LHS identifier called BAM. Do you have it? And then the scope of BAS goes, no, we do not. Because the only variable decoration is com it got is stored away at the compile phase is the variable decoration of foo. Do you see any variable decoration for BAM here? No, it doesn't. So what does JavaScript do? Now this is where the concept of lexical scope comes in, which will, I will explain later on. So what happens is JavaScript goes fishing. It goes fishing. You could go fishing outside. You could never look in, but you could always look out. So what happens is it goes outside and asks for function bar. Hey, do you have a, a left-hand side decoration called BAM? Do you have it? We're looking for a variable decoration latent LHS called BAM identifier. Now, well, let's look at the function bar. It only has variable decoration of foo, right? There's no BAM exists. So we go outside. So we go outside. What is outside? We're currently now we're in global scope, right? This is it. You find it here or it's not there, you know? And he goes, hey, do you have LHS? left-hand side identifier because we're going to assign a value to it. Do you have it in your scope engine? Global scope goes, yes, I do. I just created it for you. Meaning in the global scope, now it has a variable decoration called BAM. Now what the heck, right? It shouldn't have it because we never had this line in the first place. So we never actually declared this variable decorations into the global scope. But why is it saying it does have it and gives us the variable decoration? Now we could assign a value to it. The reason is simple. JavaScript treats LHS and RHS differently. If you're looking for an identifier in, in, in intent, to assign a value to it, then no matter what, JavaScript is going to support that. So it will create a variable decoration for you by the time you go into global scope. And you, if it doesn't have it, no matter what, it will create it for you in the global scope. The variable decoration that you need, which is LHS identifier because you're trying to assign a value to it. That is why you see people creating a, a variable that decoration, you know, like without the VAR and goes, hey, that's global variable because this is the concept. It goes fishing until the global scope looks for LHS there too. And if it's not there, it will no matter what create it for you because JavaScript supports that. Now, let's say we didn't have equal yay, you know, what if it just said bam? The search is going to be the same. We're going to keep looking, except we're looking for RHS now. We're going to go, hey, Baz of Foo, uh, scope of Baz, we're looking for RHS called identifier calls BAM because we're going to use it. We're going to BAM and we expect the value to come out. And it doesn't have it. We have bar, scope of bar. It doesn't have it. We have global scope. And it goes, no, we don't. And you're going to get an error because this is RHS. This is RHS. This is LHS lookup. This is RHS lookup. RHS, it's not going to create something because we're looking for actual value to it, intent to use, right? But if we're actually looking for LHS, left-hand side, identifier called BAM, then we're basically just trying to assign a value to it. So it's no big deal. It helps out. So we get it. And we assign a value called yay. Now, it exists. The variable the variable decoration exists in the global scope, and the value that you assign to it exists in the variable scope. I mean, in the global scope, because that's where it was created. That's where we got it. That's where we assigned it to. Now, we're done with this function decoration. I mean, 
uh, going through this function, executing this function. So we go outside, and what's left is bad. Oh no, we already did that. Sorry about that. So we're done with this function. And that is, I believe, this line. We're done with that. Now, we execute foo. The conversation goes again like this. I'm going to recursively constantly talk about this conversation because once you understand the conversation, you understand the concept. And the more you listen to it, it's just going to sink it in. So, hey, scope that I am currently in right now, which happens to be global scope. We have a RHS right-hand side identifier called foo that I am looking for. Do you have it? Yes, it does because the global scope created a variable declaration called foo. Right? And it stored a value to it, bar, at the runtime. So we get a bar back. Now, it's not, you know, baz, it's not bam, because you look at RHS and LHS from the scope, local scope that you are currently in. Right now, we're out in the open. Let's say if this happened in here, in this function scope, then you're going to look for it locally in this function scope. If it happened in here, like up here, then you're going to look for it inside of this scope of bar. But because we're looking for it out here, right here, we look for it in the global scope, and we cannot look inside of the scope. That's why they are private scopes. That's why function exists, because you want to write all these codes, store it into private scope. You cannot look in, but they could look out. That's where global variable decorations, global variables are created. So we only look at the current and look out. And since we're in global, we can't look up anymore. You know, so it has to be here. And we did find it, and bam, there you go. And next one is very uh, variable decoration called. I mean, next one is RHS identifier called bam. We're gonna look for it. And we ask the global scope, do you have bam? Well, let's see. No, it doesn't. We have it here. But remember, we never look into that. Look into scope. You know, it looks at the global scope and goes, "Hey, do you have RHS identifier called them?" You know, the only variable decoration that happened in global scope is variable foo. So this is an error. Now we go to bass. Do you have? Oh. My goodness. See, this is where uh, I, you know, I kind of lose myself. Bam does not throw an error. This is very important. This is very, very important, actually. I could, oh, thank goodness. I almost made a mistake here. Okay, so, bam. Remember. Right here. Because this is LHS. LHS lookup. Left-hand side identifier. It looked outside because it's not inside of the scope. It looked at here and it looked at global scope. And because it's LHS, its intent is to assign a value. In the global scope, we actually created the variable decoration. So this variable decoration actually exists in the global scope. So by the time we look for BAM, global scope goes, yes, I just created it. A global variable decoration called BAM. And in here, we assigned the value to it because we looked for it all the way out and we went fishing all the way out to the global scope. And then it actually gave us BAM and we actually declared, uh, assigned the value and it, it stores it into the place where it was created, which is the global scope. So we could actually get the value back and it's going to say, yay. There you go. All right. Next line is we're looking for RHS called BAS. Does it exist? Well, let's see. Global scope, we have a variable decoration. We have variable bam, variable foo. And we have this whole function stored, but this baz is stored inside of bar. So we can't get to it unless we execute bar. Right? And therefore, this will be error. Well, there it is. Now that is the full conversation that happens. 
at the compiling phase versus the runtime. In summary, in the compiling phase, we worry about all the variable decorations and function decorations. That's the job of a compiler, jobs that is executed and done at the compiling phase. And then right after that, another um, scan happens. This time is to the purpose is to run the code, which is the runtime phase. And in here, the communication happens with Scobis with terms called LHS and RHS. That's how we get all the decorations and identifiers back that we stored away at the compiling phase, and then we execute them. These are two. These are two concepts. And then the third one is lexical scope. We basically talked about lexical scope the whole time. How to summarize it? Let's go all the way in inside of this function, right? This is a whole private scope, right? Inside of it, we have another function. Now that's another little mini scope, right? This is this is it. We have a scope here, right? Private scope, and it's a hierarchy. Think of it as levels of bubbles. Right here is a scope. Outside, we have another scope containing it. The bigger scope that contains that little private scope and outside we have a global scope that contains them all it's a hierarchy of bubbles outside of bubbles outside of bubbles and these are scope this is called lexical scope lexical ne lexing means parsing scope which means at the time of compiling Right? With, when all the variable decorations and function decorations happen, all of scope mechanisms, all of the scopes are already determined at the compiling phase. So by the time it runs, it actually knows all of the scope that's going on. It actually knows uh, by the time when you run, it actually, when we're looking for BAM, it already knows that it doesn't exist here and it has to be created into global scope. Why? Because it's lexical scope. Because uh, lexical scope means compile time scope, meaning by the time we compile and store away everything, we are already aware, keeping track, of all the scopes that is, that is being created, you know, function, because function decorations happen at the compile phase and functions are scope so when all the function decorations are happening in the compile phase by the time compiling is done it already stored away all the function decorations which means it already created all the function scopes and so it already have created this structure of hierarchy of scope so it already knows the whole scope structure and that's why we say lexical scope it means all this bubbles of hierarchies of scope that actually has been created at the time of compiling phase or you could think of it as author time made decision scope structure because really compile time means you scan everything and the scope is, is structure is done you know it basically created a map of all the scope bubbles hierarchies and really we we it could it could happen at the compiling phase because we already decided it at the um, author time decision when we first wrote it. So lexical scope basically means compiling time created um, hierarchy of scope or author time created hierarchy of scope. And this is just one important concept to just understand. And there's another concept called a dynamic scope. And maybe this will be better to understand if I explain dynamic scope. Dynamic scope is scopes that happen at the runtime, right? While it's executing all the codes, the scopes are created. Hierarchy of scope is created. And this is definitely not the case because we already, all the function decorations are already getting created and getting stored away at the compile phase. So every by the time we run, all the scope has been already created and got stored away. So we are aware of all the scope st structure. If you didn't have compiling phase, 
and just execute it immediately. Scope is created and executed. Scope is created and executed. That is the dynamic scope. It doesn't have this whole map and scan of scope structure before it's executed. So that is lexical scope that we we use in JavaScript. Or think of it as um, hierarchy of bubbles of scope outside of scope. Right here, this is one scope outside. This scope contains it. And then we have global scope that contains all. That could that is lexical scope. And that's it. So we talked about the compiler phase, running time. We talked about lexical scope versus dynamic scope. And on next video, we will talk about more practice on ify, on how to look at this and how the conversation happens and how this is executed at the runtime. All right. See you guys next time.